If you're from the US and you want to move overseas, where should you go? I'm Kristen, I've been to more than 60 countries and I've helped over 1,000 people move abroad. And in this video, I'll share with you my top 10 easiest places for Americans to move overseas. We have to start off our list with Mexico, just south of the border of the United States, and it shares quite an extensive border with the US, making it very easy for you to go there. You can travel by car through Baja, Mexico, or come down the eastern coast down to the Yucatan. And of course, there are plenty of airports for you to fly into as well. Now, Mexico is also first on my list because it shares time zones with the United States, and they also have a very generous travel and tourism policy when it comes to US citizens traveling on just a passport. So if you have your passport, you can go to Mexico for up to 100 180 consecutive days and this is renewable if you leave and re-enter the country however if you're traveling on just a passport that 180 days isn't guaranteed it's up to the discretion of the authorities at the airport or at the border crossings and so if you want to ensure that you can actually live in Mexico legally live there and work there long term then you'll want to apply for a residency permit but fortunately it's pretty straightforward and easy for US citizens to apply for this. So the whole process can be started before you actually go to Mexico and it might only take three or six months to be approved. One of the more popular ways to qualify for residence in Mexico is with proof of economic solvency. And the exact amount that you have to prove can change over time, but at the moment it's around $2,800 per month during the past six months, or you can also have a bank account balance of around $55,000 over the past year. Another alternative is to invest in Mexico, and you can do this by investing in real estate of $200,000, or also by investing in Mexican businesses or the stock market. After holding a temporary residence visa for up to four years, you can then apply for permanent residence, which is also a path to citizenship. Next on my list is Colombia, a beautiful country in South America that's known for its diverse landscapes, vibrant culture, and beautiful people. There are quite a few ways to move to Colombia as a US citizen. You can opt for their new digital nomad visa, you can get their retirement visa, their freelancer visa, or even a study permit. The retiree visa, also known as the TP7, is renewable for five years and then becomes a path to permanent residency. To qualify for this visa, you need to show three times the minimum wage in Colombia, or about $775 in monthly income from either a pension or social security. This visa costs a few hundred dollars to apply and it can be processed very quickly in as little as one month. There's also the option for the student visa, which you can get if you're enrolled in at least 10 hours per week of classes at an institution that is approved and recognized by the Colombian government. And the good news here is that you can take classes in person or virtually. And there are a lot of different topics you can study, including language. So if you're looking to learn Spanish, this could be an option for you. And if you wanna learn more about that, I actually have an interview with someone who works at a Spanish language school in Colombia about that. And it is on my podcast, Badass Digital Nomads. So we will link to that in the video description. Then there's the Columbia Digital Nomad Visa, which went into effect in 2023. And just like with the retirement visa, you need to show three times the minimum wage, which is around $750 to $800 per month. And this visa has a very low application fee of only $52. And that gives you the ability to stay in Columbia for up to six months with an option to renew. And this one can also be approved very quickly within 30 days and you could be living in Colombia. An important requirement for this visa is that you have to show that you're working for a foreign company outside of Colombia or that you're working for yourself. 
whereas with the retirement visa, you need passive income. Some of the best places for Americans to live in Colombia include Medellin, Bogota, and Cartagena, which have an ever-increasing amount of rental property options and also infrastructure for working remotely, such as co-working spaces and cafes. Costa Rica is one of the most popular countries in the world for US citizens to move to, and it's easy to see why. Not only is it well located, just a few hours flight from many major US cities, but it also has a really ideal balance of a low to moderate cost of living, a very good lifestyle and quality of life, and also an amazing climate. Costa Rica is known for having one of the best climates in the world, especially in the town of Atenas. So check that out if you like springtime weather, all year long. Costa Rica also has three main paths to residency for you to consider. So the most popular ones are the rentista or the investor visa, the pensionado or the retirement visa, and then also the new Costa Rica digital nomad visa. So chances are at least one or more of these will work for you. The digital nomad visa has been available since 2022 and it allows you to stay in the country for one year with an option to renew. This has a very reasonable application fee of $100, and you just need to prove $3,000 per month in income, again, coming from a foreign source, either a company outside of Costa Rica or also from your own business or your work as a freelancer or professional services provider. You actually don't need a lawyer to apply for the digital nomad visa as it can all be done online and you can be approved in a matter of weeks. So this is a really good option. Then there are the temporary residence visas. So this is the investor visa where you need to show $2,500 in monthly income or the retirement visa where you need to show $1,000 in a pension or social security. And in the, both of the cases of these visas, you can opt into the local healthcare system, you can get your local ID card, which makes it a lot easier to open a bank account or get a driver's license. And these are also valid for up to two years and they are renewable. And they can also become paths to permanent residency and ultimately citizenship after five to 10 years. If you're thinking of moving to Costa Rica, but you just wanna make sure it's the right fit for you, you can go as a US citizen with just your passport for up to 90 days. And like Mexico, there's no limit to how many times you can exit and re-enter. Although it is of course up to the discretion of the local authorities at the border or airport. So if you have any questions about what it's like to live in Costa Rica and you wanna learn more about that, then I have plenty of videos for you as I lived there for eight years. So I'll link to those in the description below, including a video about why you might not want to move to Costa Rica. Just south of Costa Rica, Panama also offers some easy options for US citizens to live there. One interesting option is their forestry investment visa, where you can invest $100,000 into real estate or teak restoration. So I have had some real estate clients in the past who took advantage of that one. Then there's also the Panama Friendly Nations visa. So this is open to citizens of at least 50 countries, including the US, Canada, also many countries throughout Latin America, and Europe. And to qualify for this visa, you need to make an investment in real estate of about two or $300,000, or also an investment in local companies or stocks and bonds. The good thing about this visa is that you only have to be there for one day per two years, and then you can also renew it for another two years. And then after five years, you can apply for a permanent residency and ultimately a path to citizenship. So this is a really good option if you want to be living in Panama long-term or potentially forever. Panama is a very attractive place to live or retire and the country also offers a retirement visa which you can get with $850 per month in a pension or social security that's deposited to a local bank account. And this permit is valid for up to five years with the option to renew indefinitely. So this is a really great option if you're looking for somewhere warm to retire that is in a great location and also has access to 
the cities of Panama City, the beaches and the mountains, and also short flights back to the United States. Panama also has a world-class healthcare system and also a very optimal territorial tax system, which means that only income that's generated within the country is taxed. And if you wanna learn more about the lifestyle in Panama, then you can check out episode 221 of my podcast, where I interview a local resident and citizen about her experience living in Panama, moving there from the US, info on cost of living, real estate, and more. Over in Europe, the Netherlands has a very unique program called the Dutch American Friendship Treaty, which allows self-employed US citizens to streamline and fast track their path to getting a temporary stay in the Netherlands. And you can stay for two years, which is also renewable and can be a path to permanent residency there. Under this treaty, an American citizen can acquire a Dutch residence permit for the purposes of entrepreneurship, provided that they invest a substantial amount in his or her business. In this case, the minimum investment to be able to qualify for the DAFT visa, as it's known, is to deposit 4,500 euro in a local Dutch bank account, and that has to be left there during the entirety of your stay. And then you have a few different options under which category to apply under. You can apply as a self-employed person, so a freelancer, consultant, designer, programmer, accountant, or if you have at least 150,000 euro in net profit annually, you can apply as a corporation. You can be approved for this visa in as little as four months after applying, and you don't need to pass a Dutch language test unless you're gonna be going for permanent residency, which you can apply for after five years. But the Netherlands is a highly desirable place to live. It's one of my favorite countries in the world. It has a pretty mild climate year round, not the best weather, but you get a very high quality of life there. The Dutch have a really good work-life balance. It's an extremely safe country with great healthcare, great public services, and it's just a great place to live. It's also a very multicultural population where English is widely spoken. And if you wanna get some more insights into what the lifestyle is like in Amsterdam, then I will link to that video in a card here. A downside to living in Netherlands besides the often rainy weather is also the high taxes, which can range from 37% to 49.5%. But depending on your business structure and what you apply for with Adopt Visa, you can qualify for some exemptions and deductions that are especially for foreign owned businesses. So definitely look into that. Down in South America, Ecuador is an attractive and affordable place for Americans to live for its spring-like climate, low cost of living, dollarized economy, and strong expat community. Applying for residency by investment in Ecuador is much more affordable than it is in other countries, and it's also a path to citizenship. You can initially get a two-year stay, and then after the third year, you can apply for permanent residency. And Ecuador also recently launched their version of a digital nomad visa, which you can qualify for just three times the monthly minimum wage in Ecuador. Right now, that that's $450 per month, so it comes out to around 1300 US dollars per month. And like all digital nomad visas, this needs to be money that comes from your online business or from a foreign sourced company. After the digital nomad visa, you can also get into the temporary residence visa and then again on that path to citizenship. And the application fees are quite low as well. The digital nomad or rentista for work visa costs $50 to apply and $400 if you're accepted. This visa gives you permission to work in Ecuador for up to two years. Just bear in mind that if you spend 183 days per year in Ecuador, you will be considered a tax resident there. But if you're not working, you can also consider applying for the retirement visa, which you can qualify for with $12.75 per month in a pension or social security. If you decide to move to Ecuador, you can live in the bustling coastal city of Guayaquil, the valleys of Cuenca or Vilcabamba, or the capital of Quito, among many other options. 
Ecuador is also known for its beautiful beaches and proximity to the islands of the Galapagos and San Cristobal. Over the pond in Europe, along the Adriatic Sea, lies the country of Albania, where you can live for less than $1,000 per month. Albania is a fantastic and often overlooked option for US citizens because you can go there with your passport for up to one year. And this gives you the ability to both live and work there, which is quite unique compared to other tourist visas around the world. And then when your one year stay is up, you just leave the country for 90 days and then you can come back in and it renews again. Another option is to apply for Albania's digital nomad visa, which is also good for up to a year, but then it's renewable for up to five years. You can also get residency in Albania through investment or by making a real estate purchase. And the government of Albania has been working really hard in recent years to attract foreigners to its country, so take advantage of it. Albania is a beautiful, safe, and friendly place to live that is well located where you can travel to many other amazing countries in the area, from Greece to Cyprus, Croatia, Turkey, and beyond. Georgia is another country that allows US citizens to live and work there for up to one year with just a passport. And the country also has its version of a digital nomad visa program called Remotely From Georgia that's also a one-year term, and that one is renewable. But the government has really invested a lot in trying to attract foreign business owners, entrepreneurs, and freelancers. They even have this special tax incentive where you can reduce your tax rate down to between zero and 3%, typically around 1%, but the exact rate will depend on your business structure and income. And there's also an investor option to live in Georgia where you need to invest $300,000 into property, land, or real estate to be able to qualify for that, and that is good for up to five years. But Georgia is a beautiful country with diverse landscapes, ancient history, a low cost of living, and a peaceful atmosphere. You may enjoy living in the cosmopolitan capital city of Tbilisi or in Batumi, the second largest city in the country, which boasts a blend of green nature, modern skyscrapers, and beaches along the Black Sea. If you're thinking about moving to Portugal someday, then you aren't alone because thousands of Americans have been making the move from the US to Portugal in recent years, and many of them are doing so with the Portugal D7 visa. Now this is a very interesting visa because it's a passive income visa that allows you to live, work, or study in the country, and it's also open to all different types of people, whether you're a retiree or a passive income investor, or if you're working or if you are a digital nomad. And this visa, is very easy to get and it also has a lot of benefits. You can opt into the healthcare system, you can get some tax benefits, and it also allows you to travel throughout the European Schengen zone. You can apply for this visa before you go to Portugal and if you qualify, you can be approved within two to three months. The main requirement for this visa is proof of a stable passive income of at least the Portuguese minimum wage, which is currently 887 euro per month or about 961 US dollars. You'll also need proof of health insurance and accommodation. The application fee is less than 100 euro and after five years, you can renew and become eligible for permanent residency or citizenship. If you're considering a move to Portugal, then I highly recommend checking out my best places to live in Portugal video, which I'll link to a card up here and in the description below. I've been to Portugal a few times and one of my favorite places to be is the island of Madeira, but there are so many places to explore from the southern coast of the Algarve through Lisbon, Cascais, up the Silver Coast and Porto, and then into the northern and inland areas. Next door to Portugal, Spain is another beautiful country with a low to moderate cost of living and a very high quality of life, great climate, and diverse cities and towns to live in. Whether you want to live in the heart of a city like Madrid or Barcelona or relax 
on the Costa del Sol or Canary Islands, there is somewhere for you in Spain. One popular way for US citizens to move to Spain is with the non-lucrative visa. But unlike the Portugal D7 visa, this visa does not allow you to carry out any type of professional activity. So it was really created for retirees. And to qualify for this visa, you need to show 400% of Spain's public multiple effects income indicator. And what this comes out to is about 28,200 euro of income over the past 12 months. And this visa can be processed in a few months time. But Spain also has a digital nomad visa if you're gonna be working remotely. And to qualify for this one, you need to have either a college degree or at least three years of work experience in your field and $2,700 per month in recurring income. And there's also a family option for this visa as well. The approval time for this visa is as low as one month and costs less than $100 to apply but you will also become a tax resident this way and there's a flat tax rate in Spain of 24% on income up to 600,000 euro. Spain also has a type of investor visa or golden visa, but it requires half a million euro investment in real estate. And so really the non-lucrative visa or the digital nomad visa are gonna be the most accessible paths for you to live in Spain. But which country on this list would you like to live in? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe for more videos on travel, culture, and living abroad.